Good morning, Zambia, and welcome to Chancellor's Lodge in Livingston. My name is Alexandra, and I'm one of the directors here, and also the head chef of our restaurant called The Cookhouse. Now, with Valentine's Day just around the corner, I'm going to show you how to prepare a delicious and affordable meal for two that you can prepare for your significant other, or you could get involved and cook it together. So I've decided to skip the kitchen and cook outdoors, as you can see, which in the culinary world is called cooking al fresco. I mean, we can't really go out much these days, so why not get some air and try something a little bit different? So, let's get started. I'm going to be preparing a delicious charcoal grilled bream with a garlic and ginger sauce. And to go with that, I'm going to be making some potatoes in a foil parcel and some sweet corn and a beautiful, refreshing summer salad. Right. So, I'm going to start with my fish first. For my fish, I'm going to be using a few spices, which you can get locally from any spice shop or at any local grocer. So, my first spice that I'm going to be using is paprika, and I'm going to be using about two teaspoons of that. Two teaspoons. Then I'm going to be using some garlic powder. I'm just using one teaspoon of that. Then I'm going to be using a little bit of cumin. I'm going to be using about half a teaspoon of that. And then I'm going to be using some fish spice. You can use any fish spice that you like. I'm using about two teaspoons of that. Then next, I'm going to be using some garam masala, which you can usually find at any Indian shop, or you can make it yourself and you can Google how to make that yourself. Next, I'm going to be using some lime zest. I'm just going to be using about a teaspoon and a half of lime zest. Um, I'm go also going to be adding in some dill. I'm using fresh dill, but if you can't find fresh dill, you can also just go ahead and use dry dill, but fresh is always better adding that in and then I'm also going to be adding in some oregano now I'm just using a, a little bit of oregano not too much all right that's that I'm going to be adding in a little bit of freshly ground black pepper just grind that in Now, I'm not going to be putting in any salt because the fish spice that I'm using, it already has salt in, in it. So, I'm cutting out the salt. Next, I'm going to be using about, let's say, four tablespoons of lime juice. You can either use fresh lime juice or whatever lime juice you can find. Okay. I'm also going to be adding in some olive oil. Just a couple of glugs. And do a little bit more olive oil. And that's about it for my fish marinade. I'm gonna mix that all up nicely. Okay. And now, before I touch my fish, I'm just going to wash my hands because we need to keep it sanitary. And then I've got my beautiful fish here that I have already scaled and gutted and I've butterflied it. Now, when you're butterflying your fish, you need to make sure that you cut it from the backside rather than the stomach side, because that will make it much easier for you to, to keep it in this beautiful butterfly shape. All right? So once you've got that, you want to just dip it in your marinade nicely. Get all that marinade nicely on your fish. Get every single 
part of that fish coated with your beautiful marinade that you've made. Get that coated nicely. And you really just wanna give it a lot of love. Get that in there. And then once you've got that done, you can leave it in this marinade for about, let's say about 15 to 20 minutes. All right, so now that I've washed my hands and they're nice and clean, I'm going to get my clip net and um, I'm going to put my fish into this. I don't know really what this thing is called, but I think it's called a clip net. Anyway, so um, I'm going to get my fish and I'm just going to place it nicely in the clip net and I'm going to close that. And the nice thing about this is that you can actually use it for a lot of other different meats. You can use it for chicken, you can use it for burros, whatever. And it really helps to keep the heat controlled because you can keep on flipping your meat, of course. And it also just provides a nice protective layer over your meat. So you've got your fish nicely there. And then you're going to move over to your bry stand and nicely place your fish right on top and let it start going. Now, while your fish is working its magic, you're gonna start on your side dishes. So your side dishes, as I mentioned earlier, were a potato foil parcel. So I've got my potatoes here. They've already been parboiled with just a little bit of salt. That's it for about let's say 10 minutes or less, depending on what potatoes you're using. You can use baby potatoes, you can use normal potatoes, you can do what you like because, you know, a kitchen is also about creativity. So you don't have to do everything exactly as I'm telling you here. So I'm just gonna move my chopping board aside for a second and I'm going to prepare the foil parcel. So it's very simple. and then just dump your potatoes in the middle. You can do more or less potatoes depending on how many people you're cooking for, but for now, we're just sticking to two people. All right, so you want to spice up your potatoes a little bit. So what we're gonna use is Aromat, very popular seasoning in Africa. Just a little bit of that. We're also gonna use some thyme, which works very well with potatoes, I must say. Just a little bit of that. You don't need to take it off the stalks because it's just providing the flavor, I believe. All right, we've got our thyme. A little bit of garlic powder, just a little, not too much, about a quarter of a teaspoon. Some paprika, also not too much, a quarter of a teaspoon would do. And then um, you're going to add in some butter because obviously your potatoes need something to cook in. Otherwise you'll just get burnt potatoes. So you're going to add on some butter there. Also I've used about three cubes. This is the size I'm using. And then a secret touch is some mayonnaise. So you're just going to do about two little dollops of mayonnaise on the top of your parcel and then that's that to top it off we're going to add a little bit of black pepper and that's it we're going to also no actually that's not it we're going to add also another little touch of oregano because Fresh herbs really just add another dimension to your cooking. So now you're going to create your parcel and we're just going to wrap it up nicely. And you might want to think about your presentation. So I've done like a little bit of a crown here on the top. 
So I've got my potato foil parcel ready and it's going to be ready to go onto the fire pretty soon and in the meantime I'm going to check on my fish. I'm just going to flip it over and wow it's doing so lovely. I'm seeing some nice charred marks coming up here which is exactly what I want and I've flipped it over so that I can carry on working on the rest of my side dishes. So the next side dish I'm going to be working on is my sweet corn and as you can see I've only got two because we're doing a Valentine's dinner. Um, so for my sweet corn what I'm going to do is I'm also going to be doing it in foil because it's all going onto the fry because as I mentioned we're cooking our fresco. So I'm just going to spice it up a little bit. I'm going to use some butter as well. I'm just going to grab a spoon here. I'm going to use a little bit of butter also for them to cook in nicely and then I'm going to use similar and now I'm just going to spice it up just a little not too much I'm going to add some paprika just a bit quarter teaspoon and I'm also going to add in a little bit more of that garam masala that I use for the fish just because we want to keep a continuity in terms of flavor with our side dishes as well as our main dish. To this, I'm also going to be adding some fresh coriander. I'm going to leave a little bit of fresh coriander to use for my garnish at the end. And then I'm also going to add in just a little bit of black pepper. Okay, so I've got this little foil tray but if you don't have this foil tray you can just wrap your your sweet corn individually in a in a foil some, something similar to this so with that I'm just going to cover my tray with a little bit more foil just so it can cook nicely on the brine In the meantime, I'm going to show you how I prepare a simple summer salad. You can adapt this recipe however you want to, uh, depending on the ingredients that you have available. But for me, I'm going to be using some purple lettuce as well as green lettuce. I'm also going to be using some baby spinach. I'm going to be using some tomatoes, some feta, some cucumber red onions, olives, and some carrots. I'm just going to prepare my salad on a nice plate that I've got here. You can prepare it on anything you've got at home. So I'm going to start with my baby spinach. I'm going to top it off with a bit more of that pickle, a bit more red onion, and a few more shreds of carrot. All right, so that's done. So now I'm going to show you how to make the dressing for the salad. You can chuck that away. The dressing for the salad is really very simple. I'm just starting with a little ramekin here. I'm going to add in some olive oil. About a tablespoon. I'm going to add in some honey and we're using Zambezi gold honey, pure Zambian honey. A little bit of that. We're gonna add in some balsamic vinegar, but if you don't have balsamic vinegar, you can always use whatever vinegar you have on hand. Or you can also use lemon juice, lime juice, whatever acid-based products that you have. Just gonna add in a little bit of that. Okay, and then a little bit of black pepper. And a little bit of salt. All right. I'm gonna give that a bit of a mix. And a nice trick to use is if you have like a jar or something that can close, you can just Put all your ingredients into that jar and just shake it all up. So we've got our salad there. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna set 
a few of these bowls that I've been using aside so that I can have a little bit of space. Okay, so I'm just going to run you through how I make the sauce for the fish. My onions have cooked down a little. I'm just going to add in some fresh garlic to that. Let that go for a bit. And then I'm going to add in some red peppers. And as I said, you can use whatever color peppers you have. Let that also simmer down while that's, while that's going. You add in a few spices, similar spices to what we've been using. You add in a bit of paprika because we don't want the sauce to look very white. We want to give it a little bit of color. You add in some more garlic powder, right? The rest of your garam masala is also going onto the fish and the rest of that oregano. Okay. To that also, a little bit of coriander. You just really want that freshness. Okay. Let that go. And then you're going to add in that beautiful mixture that you had pounded earlier, which is your fresh ginger, fresh garlic, and fresh chili that you had pounded up. Okay, some black pepper. Okay. Then once that has cooked down for some time. You don't want your peppers to be too soft. You still want them to have a little bit of a bite, but you want your garlic and your ginger and everything to really cook down nicely. Because that is just where all the flavor is. That is where the flavor is and you will get a beautiful, beautiful sauce from this, I can guarantee. All those herbs and spices cooking, they smell amazing. I wish you could smell what I'm smelling right now because it is just so beautiful. The aroma is stunning. All right, so I'm just gonna let that go while I, while I just grab the rest of my ingredients. So here I've got some fresh cream and then I'm also just going to slice a lime. That just adds that last hint of freshness to that sauce. Just slice that lime up. Just gonna use half a lime, half lime juice. Okay, so now to the sauce, I'm adding on the cream. And you could also add white wine to this if you'd like, but it's not necessary. For this show, we're just going to use lime juice, just the juice of half a lime. All right, there's a little creepy that went in there. Okay. So that's my sauce now going nicely and just the cream just adds another level to this really add something great. Okay, I'm gonna add in a little bit of water because I just want to loosen up that sauce a little so that it can pour nicely on the fish. And trust me when I say this sauce really adds a professional level to your outdoor dining experience. Okay, got that done. And I'm just going to let the sauce simmer for a little bit. And then when we come back, I will show you how we're gonna plate and present everything. Okay, so our potato foil parcel and our sweet corn have been on the braai for 
about 20 minutes now and now we're ready to plate what we're going to do first is we're going to work on the fish so we already have our fish that was nicely charcoal grilled and we are going to top it with the sauce that we made i have my sauce right here and you're just going to pour the sauce on top of the fish and coat it nicely with all those peppers, all those herbs, all that beautiful cream. Get as much of that sauce onto the fish as possible. All right, once that's done, set your sauce aside. I've already gone ahead and garnished a little bit with some fresh lime. Next, I'm going to get my corn. My corn has been on that grill for some time, so it has some beautiful charred marks get that over put it place it right by the fish and you can pour that all that is some beautiful flavor that you can just pour on top right once that's done I'm just going to get my tea towel because I don't want to burn and I'm going to grab my potatoes from the fire and they are just doing so well I can already smell them from here I'm going to place them on this board and put the board right there and just open that up and just create a pretty little parcel and just to garnish that I'm going to use a little bit of fresh coriander I'm also going to put a bit of fresh coriander on top of the fish and I'm also going to use a little bit of parsley. You can just rip that with your fingers, no problem. Right on top of the potatoes and a little bit on top of the fish. Okay, a little bit of black pepper to go on top of the fish as well and on top of the potatoes. And because I'm creating some sort of a platter here, I'm going to move my fish just slightly and then place the potato foil parcel right on top here. And then move that all aside. And then finally, I can just drizzle my salad. I'm going to just place everything right here. I can drizzle my salad dressing right on top of the salad. And that's that. That's a beautiful Valentine's Day meal for two. Trust me, it will be more than filling for two. You've got your salad, you've got your fish, you've got your potatoes and your sweet corn. And for me, that's about it. I'm wishing you all a beautiful Valentine's Day. And let's, get, let's hope you get spoiled rotten.